I'm all alone in a ghost town It's a beautiful madness Inside my soul and I can't stop Thinking of What's going on everyone? Michael Tan here, back again with another video. <laughs> Alright, so we are checking out top 10 amazing facts about the Philippines. Because I still want to learn more about the, the country my family is from. So, let's check out some amazing facts because I feel like getting amazed today. And I hope you enjoy the video. But also, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Because it's going to be good. Well, let's not waste no time. Let's get into it. Top 10 amazing facts about the Philippines. Boom. Okay. Let's go. Let's get that volume up. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Huh, we gotta start it off like this. <laughs> are a beautiful tropical paradise and vacation spot. And in this video, we're going to dive into its beautiful terrain and look at the 10 most Let's interesting start. things you should know about the Philippines. <laughs> Number 10, the text capital of the world. In 1994, the, the short message service was introduced short to Filipinos as a promotional gift. I just realized what SMS stands for. Uh, nothing to do with the video. Short message service. Chase. Gimmick, but soon proved to be a useful substitute for telephone calls. Mm. At first, only the elderly and hearing impaired caught on. Since the service was free with subscription, it wasn't long before the public enrolled as they saw a way to exploit the system to communicate freely without being charged. When businesses wow. began to catch on and saw how they were losing money, users began getting charged one peso for every message one sent. Peso. At the time, this equated to less than half a penny in United States currency. Since SMSs proved to still be more economically affordable, the trend continued to grow and spread. According to 2009 statistics, about 80% of the Philippines' population was subscribed to the service, and on average, over 1.39 billion messages were being sent daily. The country <laughs> became known messages. as the unofficial text capital of the world, a title it maintained up until the early 2000s. Number 9. The Flag the flag of the Philippines has an adequate amount of symbolism I, behind it. I, I remember this from the last video. The three stars and a sun, it is adorned with a royal blue and scarlet red band, both of which are parallel to one another. Mm -hmm. The golden sun with eight rays that protrude from its center symbolize the country's first group of provinces, which were in 1896, sparking the Philippine Revolution. The three golden stars represent the three main islands, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Mindanao! If the red band is displayed above the blue when hoisted, this indicates that the nation is in a state of a war. war. Number eight, inventions. Karaoke, Karaoke is a skillful pastime in which amateurs and or amateur made singers the pattern. sing along with recorded music using a handheld microphone. Oh, we're not going to talk about that. displayed on okay. a screen along with changing colors okay. and other visuals to help guide the singer along. What part to of the Philippines is she from? A large number of Filipinos <laughs> have this in common as a favorite pastime. Music from the 1960s from such artists as The Beatles and Frank Sinatra had become favorites in the early days of karaoke. A Filipino named Roberto del Rosario is credited with its invention in 1975, but this has been disputed by a Japanese musician named Daisuke Inoue with little to come of the matter. Number 7. Hmm. Biggest Shoes SM. The city of Marikina can be found on the Marikina. island of Luzon. This somewhat touristy destination was given the title Shoe Capital of the Philippines because of the fact that it is the largest footwear producer for the country. Sources estimate that around 70% of Filipino shoe production Bro, what are you talking about, man? ...takes place here. The local shoe museum houses a wide what? assortment of dress and casual fridges? variants. Part of the famous shoe collection fresh. of former First Lady Imelda Marcos is exhibited as well, along with others belonging to celebrities and world leaders. What may strike you as most interesting about the town of Marikina is that it is where the largest pair of wingtip shoes is on a public display. 
They each measure 5.29 meters long or 17.3 feet and 1.83 meters Who are they for? six feet tall. It ain't me. Number six, Philippine cuisine. Chicken adobo. Adobo is arguably the most popular yep. of all Filipino dishes. Unofficially, it is considered by many to be so a meal that best represents the country. It is made by braising either pork right. or ch- I could eat that, that oil stuff you just pour on the rice. I could literally just eat that and the rice. I'm good. I'm good. I'll eat bowls and bowls of it. Chicken in a sauce made out of pantry goods that include vinegar, garlic, cooking oil, bay leaf, soy mm-hmm. sauce, mm-hmm. and peppercorns. Mm-hmm. This is generally you gotta need more chicken than that. What is that? Most often on festive occasions or Come on. request. When Spaniards colonized the Philippines in the late 16th and up through the 17th century, they encountered a cooking process which involved making stew out of vinegar. The original term for it has been lost to history, but it is because of this that they began calling it adobo, the adobo. Spanish word for seasoning or marinade. Oh, really? There are numerous variants to this simple dish and often change by the season. Cider vinegar is enjoyed primarily during the end of summer and up through the winter months, while brown sugar-coated adobo is a more common meal around Christmas time. Hmm. Number five, crucifixion reenactments. The Philippines currently rank the devotion as the most to this Catholic is populated sick. country, amazing. which consists of roughly 85% of the population. Holy Week is celebrated by multitudes each year, but in a much more unusual way than most others are used to. In order to cleanse themselves even more of sin outside of confession, or for other religious reasons, penitents will whip themselves over the back or have someone else do it for them until bloody. This is done to reenact the same suffering Jesus endured before meeting the end of his earthly life. Some Filipinos take this to a new level by Mm. opting to be crucified. Nails are driven through the participants' hands and feet, and they are mounted onto a cross, but then let down. Such an uncommon practice has attracted tourists because of its uniqueness. Some brave men even go as far as doing it year after year. Number four, the Banaue Rice Terraces. The Banaue Rice Terraces are 2,000-year-old ridges. Sick. That is beautiful. Imagine a selfie right on top there. Far out. Amazing. Carved into the mountains of Ifugao in the Philippines. They are thought to have been made primarily by by ancestors of the indigenous people. This creation is often referred to as the Filipino eighth wonder of the world. Rice is grown in abundance here, even though it no longer has the appeal to farmers at an altitude of approximately 1,500 meters or 4,900 feet above sea level. Number three, traditions. Maybe one of the most odd and horrifying monsters to come out of Filipino mythology is the Batruculon. This creature from the bowels of hell is said to impregnate a virgin and then come later to the home she resides at, depending if she's married or not, and murder her. He will proceed to cut open the abdomen and eat the fetus. As legend has it, to keep the mother and child out of harm's way, you must swing a butterfly knife over the woman's stomach while she is in labor. With this in mind, it makes you wonder what is truly more scary, an evil demon eating a baby before birth, or seeing someone dangling a razor-sharp knife over someone about to give birth. Just remember, probably both these has it probably both these stories, scary. and this is not an accurate portrayal of Filipino life. In fact, this practice is so uncommon and more for the fun of a good yeah, I've never heard of that. story that it is not even heard of by many if Filipinos. If you do this, let me know in the comments Number below. Two, I'm really curious about that, actually. Filipinos. Tim Tebow is likely the most well-known person to be born in the Philippines. Who? His parents met at the University of Florida in the late 1960s and were married in 1971. Four years later, the family moved to the Philippines to work as Baptist missionaries and built a ministry. Tim's wife, Pamela, discovered she was pregnant while still recovering from a coma induced by amoebic dysentery. 
the fetus suffered a severe placental abruption limiting chances of survival. Doctors expected a stillbirth and advised an abortion, which was turned down by his parents because of their religious beliefs. On August 14, 1987, Tebow was brought into the world Tebow. alive and well in the town of Manila, the second largest hey. Filipino city. He went on to have an exemplary professional football career in the States and has played on teams not such as person. the New England Patriots, Denver Broncos, and New York Jets. Other famous Filipinos include Manny professional Pacquiao. boxer Manny Pacquiao and YouTube sensation Dominic Panganaban. Dominic number Panganaban. One, down with Pepsi. When Pepsi Cola ran its number fever promotion in 1992, they offered 1 million Filipino pesos to whoever found the lucky number 349 under their bottle cap. Due to what they called a computer glitch, the number was mass produced, which equated to thousands of winners. When the company found they were unable to pay their dues, some outraged locals rioted and others even bombed Pepsi's Filipino bottling plant. Reports state that a woman and her child were even killed by a grenade intended uh, to cause damage to a Pepsi truck. High courts in the Philippines have continually turned down requests for Pepsi that to pay is an full what some claims owed to the people. For now, the matter is resolved, but Pepsi's reputation remains tarnished. Coca-Cola. Like these top 10 videos? Subscribe by clicking... Right. Some of those were actually pretty freaking creepy. Like, that was scary. Jeez. By far, the most, most one I'm curious about is the one with the person with the butterfly knife over the baby and that little demon thing eating, eating it. Let me know if that's, if that's, is that real? Is that real? Jeez. But that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to watch me watch more of these, then like, comment, and subscribe. We're on a road, we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. We're nearly there, we're on like 39. We're close. But help me, help you get to that level there. But thank you very much, guys, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. <laughs> Bye.